everybody, Gyno Centrism Watch here, and today I decided I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Normally I talk about, you know, political issues like men's rights activism, feminism, you know, that sort of thing. Lately I've been binging on a lot of, like, ex-prisoner videos, like videos that ex-convicts have been posting on YouTube ever since they got out of prison. One of the related videos caught my eye. It was a video by a YouTube channel called This Is Monsters, posting a video about the Broken Arrow killings that way back in 2015 by Robert Michael Bever. Now, I actually didn't know about these killings until re relatively recently. Like, I've learned about it a few days ago, even though this took place way back in July of 2015. I'm not going to go too deep into details about the basics of what this murder was about, as you could look it up yourself, Broken Arrow Killings. No, today I want to talk about something specific. I want to talk about Robert for the time being. Robert is that kid who masterminded these attacks, thinking that he was going to outdo Columbine, according to news reports, along with Robert's own testimony, as well as Michael's testimony when he was interrogated. For some reason, Michael's interrogation was public, but... Uh, Roberts was not. Roberts is sealed from the public, probably because they realized that Robert wanted his interrogation to be seen. Anyway, fast forward to 2019, which was the date that this picture was taken, as well as this picture, and uh, I've noticed something different about Robert's hairstyle. Now, why would he be sporting a hairstyle like this? I have a theory. He got got. That's right. I believe Robert Bever is now a prison bitch. Now, this tends to happen to people who are scrawny and skinny, and I don't think it necessarily uh, happens to people who commit horrible crimes, but when it does, it's kind of hard to feel sympathetic for a guy who brutally murdered uh, three people in his family, given that Michael killed the other two. From what I can tell, it seems like Michael's doing a better job adjusting to the prison life, just based on the pictures that we see. He now looks like he's a part of the Peckerwood gang, based on his chosen hairstyle, or lack of it, rather. Finding information on this case has been rather difficult. There's a lot of stuff that's being hidden from the public. We don't see Robert's testimony. We don't see Robert's interrogation. We see Michael's interrogation, but the audio was kind of really of low quality. Michael mumbles most of the time, and there's no subtitles, so we can't even tell what he's saying. However, I did have an interesting exchange with somebody on YouTube. I take it with a grain of salt, but somebody had said that they had a family member who actually shared a cell with Robert Bever for a few months. I asked for information, and they told me that he was in a mental health unit in protective custody, and that he's attempting to write a book, hoping to expand his legacy, probably. And, well, we're going to see how that goes. Yeah. The thing is, Robert Bever is sporting life without parole, times five tattoos, uh, indicating that he seems to be fully embracing the prison life that he now lives. I don't know if that's a cope or if he really is down with being a prison bitch that, to that degree. Either way, he gets no sympathy for me considering what he did, the context of his murders. But, uh, yeah, he's now a prison bitch. And that's basically how this messed up story has been going so far. Like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comment section below of this ridiculous turn of events. I know it's been late of me to post this because I just discovered that all this took place just now, but yeah.